HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Happy September and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will preview the 2016 Hillers Girls and Boys Cross Country teams. I also spoke with new Hillers Athletic Director Dee King. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts hosted their annual Fall Open House and Courtney will get you caught up with the many HCAM programs coming up with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. State Representative Carolyn Dykema hosted a senior picnic at the YMCA in Hopkinton. Seniors from the 8th Middlesex District enjoyed a fun afternoon and had a chance to chat with their representative. Today's event was my annual senior picnic that I've been hosting uh, since I came into office. And in fact, there was one campaign promise that I made to the residents of the district, and that was to continue hosting this picnic, which has been a tradition here for a really long time. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, at the picnic, it was started by um, Bob and Jackie Lavoie way back, probably 30 years ago, in the backyard of their house. And my predecessor, Barbara Gardner, uh, took it over from the Lavoies, and it's been a tradition uh, here in Hopkinton ever since. All right, and a great turnout today uh, looked like. Uh, could you just talk about the outcome of today's event? Yeah, it was a really great turnout. Uh, higher than we expected. I think the largest turnout that we've ever had. Uh, we had beautiful weather, and we had some great speakers today, which we haven't had in the past. We had Secretary Bonner from the State uh, Executive Office of Elder Affairs, who talked about what's uh, being worked on at the state level relative to elders and health care. And we had Ka Congresswoman Catherine Clark, who represents part of the district with Hopkinton and South Row. Um, who was here, or Hollison and Southboro, excuse me, who did a great job, and Senator Eldridge uh, and Senator Karen Spilka, uh, representative, was here as well. So it's just a great, great turnout. The Hillers volleyball team posed for this group shot taken by HCAM's Mike Tarosian. The Hillers are coming off an exciting playoff run last year, and we are excited here at HCAM to have another fun-filled season of Hillers volleyball all fall long. Four famous princesses posed at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts open house. The HCA showed off some brand new space at the facility. There will be much more from the HCA open house coming up on this newscast. This photo is courtesy of photography teacher at the HCA, Lynn Damianos, and her company, Damianos Photography. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts annual Fall Open House featured a number of HCA instructors providing information about the many programs and classes available at the Performance Arts Center. The afternoon also featured fun activities for the kids as well as a visit from four famous princesses. Hello, I'm Princess Ariel. Hi, I'm Princess Anna. Hello, I'm Queen Elsa. Hello, I'm Princess Belle. And we're at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts hosted their annual fall open house. Many were in attendance to enjoy talking with the instructors and learning about programs at the HCA. Yeah, we have a lot happening. We um, have some visual artists who are doing some demonstrations of classes. We have information about interstitial theater. We have the princesses are here to greet our little uh, our youngest participants and uh, the very exciting thing that's happened today is a preview of our new ceramic studio which is in the uh, farmhouse and uh, we have some teachers doing demonstrations on hand building and with the wheel and a uh, brand new set of classes that we're offering in the fall that we're really really excited about. So there's a 10% off if you uh, come today and sign up for a class. We have dance classes, um, visual art classes, theater, 
uh, music and uh, film and also some writing classes as well. So um, something for everyone all ages. We have a brand new um, program for little ones to learn piano. We have music together classes um, and right up through to adult art classes, adult dance classes and a whole new adult theater program. One major difference from this year's fall open house at the HCA compared to last year was the performance center room was open and ready to go. We're really excited about the performance center. We opened last November and we have uh, Entrustage Left as the resident theater company has 12 theatrical productions and we're looking to add a whole children's series, a concert series, lectures. We want to have um, dance performances in there and you know, something different every day of the week. What are your names? Princesses? <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> oh my gosh, you have me and my... Oh. Well, I need a picture of all of you three on my dress. Do you think we can do that? Yeah? What's your name, sweetheart? Whoa, that's a beautiful name. My name is Queen Elsa. It's so nice to meet you. At the open house, there were also plenty of activities for the kids. Because these are all like tattoo stickers for little kids and make them happy, I guess. Yeah, you can. I'm a counselor in training. I volunteer here. Uh, I really enjoy working here. It's fun. I do shows and stuff here and yeah, sometimes volunteer. So at the signal, we are making paper chain snakes where you uh, put one of these like this and then you chain it together with another one to make a nice long snake. We've got green and yellow and we've got pink tongues and googly eyes for so all the kids to make snakes with. Excellent. Uh, do you work here or are you a volunteer? I'm a volunteer. View more from the Hopkinton Center for the Arts open house on our website, hcam.tv. During the summer, Hopkinton High School hired a new athletic director after the departure of Eric Cargill. Former Framingham and Ashland basketball coach D. King has taken over as the Hillers AD and is very excited to be involved with the program. I grew up playing sports my whole life. It's always been a huge part of who I am um, and what I love. And played in high school, continued on to play basketball in college at Trinity College, and then went on to be a school counselor. Um, and always have sort of kept my foot in the sports realm through coaching. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work here at Hopkins High School in the athletic department, um, doing various things, working with the athletic captains, uh, working as the NCAA liaison for students going on to participate in sports in college. Um, and so then when this opportunity came up, it was something I just, it meshed sort of all the worlds I'm interested in together and I figured why not go for it and super humbled by the opportunity to be here and be now such a big part of the athletic department here in Hopkinton. There's a lot of pride here that already exists and can't wait to keep that going and grow it and just yeah, just we're, we're in a good spot here, but we want to continue, so I'm really excited. So, um, right now, getting my feet under me and just making sure day-to-day -day operations are happening smoothly for all the kids and coaches. Uh, but I have a lot of different things that I'm excited about, new initiatives. I'm really passionate about student leadership and coaching leadership and development. So I have some thoughts on things that we can do for that. There's already some things that are in place here, but ways to strengthen that and, and make it a stronger program for our student athletes to think about their own development as leaders, both on and, well, in and outside of the athletic realm. And the same for coaches. Uh, we have a really great group of veteran coaches here, but we're always lifelong learners who, who wanna make our programs better and better ourselves in our different roles. Um, and then also just community involvement is really important to me to get our student athletes and programs out into the community. Um, we're so lucky here in Hockington, we have a community that backs us on basically everything we're doing. And so just to make sure that our community feels appreciated by us the way that we appreciate them. 
So I would say just off the top of my head, those are two big things that feel really important as we move forward. But hopefully we have a lot of different things going throughout the course of the year and over the next few years. All coaches have been great so far. Actually, all the coaches. I've had a chance here and there to meet with a bunch of passing. Fall coaches, we've had really you know, formal, longer meetings, but I'm very lucky. Our coaches, our coaching staff in general, lots of veterans, a lot of people who know the ropes and know what they're doing. We have a lot of young coaches too, actually, who are super high energy and, and bringing some you know, new, new energy into our programs. But it's been great for me as you know, in a new role here. I've learned a lot from our coaches. They've all offered their help and perspective and that's been wonderful because I, I'm learning and they know what they've been doing for however many years. So it's been, it's been really nice to have their support but also for them to sort of offer me some insight starting this new role and what would be helpful for them, what would give them the support they need. But they're a pretty well-oiled machine, I would say. So they know what they're doing. It's been, they've made my job easy so far. All right, well, yep. welcome to Hopkinton, and we're looking forward to the fall season. Thanks, excited to be here. Go Hillers! Welcome to Hopkinton, D. King, and we look forward to many Hillers sports during the fall season. Once again, HCAM will be bringing you Hillers football, soccer, and volleyball, plus stats, highlights, and much more. Coming up on HCAM News, we have a preview of the Hillers girls and boys cross-country teams, Courtney. We'll get you up to date with upcoming HCAM programming, plus a whole lot more. You're watching HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. As we near the beginning of the fall sports season, we plan to give you a glimpse of all the Hillers fall sports teams. This week, we start with the Hillers girls cross country team. The experienced team is rated highly and is expected by many to have many great accomplishments this season. Led by 11th year head coach Brian Hall, the Hillers girls cross country team is back at practice and getting ready for the season. This will be my 11th season, uh, started in 2006. Um, I've run 20 marathons and uh, now I live vicariously through, uh, through my, my female athletes here. Um, so we're the team captains and what that means is that we will like um, kind of lead the team in like warm ups and all that stuff and like be available for questions and then we just plan events for the team to do together throughout the season. This year, there are high expectations for the experienced Tillers girls cross country team. Well, we uh, graduated no one from my top 12 and we've added at least three real solid runners. So we have high hopes for the season. If I can just keep them healthy, then uh, good things will follow. Um, Preseason polls are out and we're ranked fourth in all of Massachusetts. So now we've got to live up to that. Yeah, so we have a lot of returning runners, which is great. Almost everyone last year um, who's on varsity is returning. Actually, I think everyone is returning. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and plus we do have um, some new 
uh, people on the team that we think will be pretty good this year, so we're hoping to go pretty far. I asked what the team has been working on during the first few practices. Yeah, so we've been doing lots of different kinds of workouts. We started with, um, we'll do tempo miles, which are slower than your race pace, but faster than your average run pace. And we do maintenance runs, which are just maintenance miles. They're easy miles just to get your miles up. Um, and tomorrow we're having a two mile time trial on the track. So kind of like a preseason, a way to measure your um, progress throughout the summer and to see how the team is stacking up for the fall. Uh, we're starting to inject some hills, uh, no speed work yet, just um, trying to see who's fit after a, a summer where, you know, I'm not allowed to coach during the summer, so uh, the captains are kind of in charge of organizing runs, and uh, so far so good, it looks good. Cross-country programs have grown across the state, but just in case you don't exactly know what cross-country is, Coach Brian Hall explained. Championship races are over uh, five kilometers, which is 3.1 miles. Um, it can be a variety of uh, terrain, hills, grass, dirt, trails. Um, challenging sport. I mean, you can, some people's goal is just to finish these races. So uh, it's kind of a cool sport. It's a no cut sport. We get cuts from other, other sports. Um, some people are just trying to get in shape for the winter sport. Um, other people are among, we have some that are among the best athletes in the entire state who are going to be scholarship caliber. I asked the captains what makes the girls cross country team worth following this season. One of the strongest teams in the school. We have a lot of fun. Um, we're just like a fun group of people. and. Um, yeah, I think that the team dynamic is a lot different than other sports. We're very inclusive. No matter your skill level, you're welcome here and you can be a part of our running family. Yeah. The Hillers boys cross country team does not feature as much experience as the girls team, but it has a good amount of newcomers and is led by four experienced captains. Head coach Jennifer Fairbanks, as well as the captains, spoke highly of the boys cross country roster and are excited for the season to start. The boys cross country team is also back at practice and head coach Jennifer Fairbanks is ready for the season. Um, this is my 10th year coaching, so I'm very excited about that milestone. I grew up in Hopkinton, I ran for Hopkinton, I ran for Coach Scanlon, um, so he was an inspiration in getting me to teach and to run and I learned from one of the best, so it's exciting. Our home course is at Hopkinton State Park and that's where I ran, so we got a lot of history there. Uh, how's the team looking this year? Is it an experienced team? Is it a young team? And what are your expectations I for think the it's season? It's going to be a growing year. Um, we graduated 20 seniors, uh, but I'm so excited to see so many new faces. Uh, we have about 12 freshmen, but also 12 upperclassmen, which is exciting to get, get a whole new variety. Uh, I don't know how to predict our top five, so that's always exciting to, for some surprises. Um, we have a lot of underclassmen this year. Um, we have a lot of new talent, which is going to be really good. Um, yeah, because last year, our t I think our top seven, which is varsity, I think six out of the seven were seniors, and they all graduated. So I was a little worried on how the team might look this year, but seeing all these new faces, I think we'll have a pretty strong year. All right, excellent. I think it's pretty cool having like a big range of uh, speeds in this team now, um, and I'm pretty excited. In the early practices, it has been all about strength, stamina, and conditioning. Right now, we're just getting our mileage up. You know, um, summer running is important, so we're just kind of trying to get into the season. But we've been doing a lot of hill sprints and um, just long distance work. Yeah, hill sprints is uh, pretty critical for us because at our home race, we have three big hills that, in comparison to other courses, they don't have. So that's something we've been really working on, which I think is going to give us the edge in races. And overall, we've been working on sprints too, so it's been good. Hopefully they've come in with some distance running, but I like to be mindful that some kids have come in not running anything. So always, first couple of weeks, I've got um, different levels of running. So they could run two miles, three miles, five miles. We all start off at the same area, so we look together as a team, and then we, we try to run at their ability and then slowly bring them all um, together safely. And of course, with the heat, we try to, that's our number one thing, is to drink water and stay safe. Um, we'll slowly build in some speed, and like the kids say, we did, we did hills already on Friday, so like the variety. Despite the boys cross country team being a younger team, the captains have great experience. Um, I've been running ever since a mini marathon when I was younger. 
and then I've joined cross country since the beginning of middle school. Yeah. Um, I used to run cross country in middle school. Um, I joined the team freshman year, done it every year since. It's been a good experience. I've always kind of been a runner, but I didn't join the team till my junior year. What happened is I was going to play soccer, but then I got cut from that, so this was my fallback, and I didn't think I'd love it that much, but it was really life-changing, you know, and now I'm captain, and I couldn't be happier. He, he's a slacker. <laughs> the captains are also multi-sport athletes. Uh, another sport I play, which I've been playing all my life, is hockey. You know, that's another reason why I initially joined is I wanted to get in better shape for hockey, and it's still one of the main reasons I do it. I think it's a great way to get in shape and I'm really excited for that season as well. Um, I'm a captain of the uh, swim and dive team for Hoppington. Um, I've been doing that for three years. It's a great team and um, but I love cross country. You know it's a good way to get in shape for the season. Um, I'm captain of the ultimate frisbee team and yeah getting that running down getting ready for all those hops. <laughs> Be sure to follow Hiller's Sports all season long on our website, hcam.tv. Believe it or not, school is back in session, which means we will have a whole lot of programming coming up here on HCAM. To fill you in with what to expect on the HCAM channels, here's Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Monday, September 5th at 8.30 p.m., the different causes of, stigma towards, and treatments for obesity are discussed on a new physician focus. When we talk to patients that have overweight and obesity, they may actually have a diet that is pretty virtuous mm -hmm. or superior to someone that's leaner. Mm -hmm. And so we first need to take stock in what are they really eating. Maybe they're okay. doing really well in that realm, and maybe that's not where my focus needs to be at all. Mm -hmm. And so I would challenge the doctor to maybe take a broader view to see okay. what is causing them. Maybe everyone in their family has had obesity, and so that's the cards they were dealt. On Wednesday, September 7th at 8 p.m., Don Cronin and Bill Minch share how the Lions Club aids its community and discuss upcoming events on a new All About Hopkinton. I'm a bill. If you ever see that, go in and it's free, free screenings. And, um, you know, we're trained how to do the screenings, the Lions members, how to, to pr pr perform the actual screenings. But then we would recommend to people to see a pro professional from there if we see anything in the diagnostics mm -hmm. that we, we think needs attention. On Thursday, September 8th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. If you want to know more about our upcoming shows, head on over to hcam.tv connect where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know about upcoming Hopkinton events, you can subscribe to our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can view more about the Hopkinton Center for the Arts Open House and Hiller Sports as the teams are back at practice and getting ready for the fall season. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thank you for watching HCAM.
me.